Aloha everyone and welcome back to the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates update for July 27th, 2018. Tonight in the look at that there segment I got some interesting things to show you and also talk about uh, with those particular things I'm going to point out. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, you know, hit uh, the subscribe button and the bell icon down below next to it uh, so you get notified of new videos. And of course, if you like this video, thumbs up it and, uh, you know, leave me a comment and let me know your, your thoughts on everything. So with that said, let's get to, right to the update so we can uh, take a look at some of the, uh, the good stuff. The USGS report for Friday, July 27th, 2018 for 12.02 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time reports that Fissure 8 continues to erupt lava into the channel leading northeastward from the vent. No new overflows were reported this morning despite the channel appearing nearly full. At the coast, the south edge of the lava flow showed no incandescence this morning and remains less than 0.1 miles from the Po'o'iki boat ramp at, at Isaac Hale Park. The active ocean entry is a few hundred yards to the east of this lava flow edge. The survey of other fissures show no activity at this time. Over on Highway 130, HVO field crews are still tracking activity as conditions allow them to do so. There has been no significant changes in temperature, crack width, or gas emissions noted. Up at the Kilauea Volcano Summit, the most recent collapse event occurred at 12.09 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time, July 26th, and was similar in character and magnitude to previous events. The time interval between the last two collapse events, almost 53.5 hours, was the longest since early June. Seismicity has increased steadily since yesterday's collapse event and has already reached 30 to 35 events per hour. The next collapse event is expected tomorrow. Inward slumping of the rim and walls of Halemaumau continues. Sulfur dioxide emissions from the volcano summit are still very low. This gas and minor amounts of ash resuspended by wind are being transported downwind. Small bursts of ash and gas may coincide with the summit collapse events. The summit region is occasionally impacted by sulfur dioxide from the lower east rift zone eruption. And finally, the EPA air monitoring sensor report. Tonight I'm actually going to switch from using the Pahoa High School sensor because it always seems to have an SO2 reading down in the uh, thousandths parts per million. So I think it, it needs calibrating um, because the, the Pahoa Community Center, which is you know pretty much next door, um, all, seems to have a zero reading. So we're, we're gonna use that one. So let's get to the report. For the Pahoa Community Sensor for reading at 9.12 p.m., uh, the current reading was 0.0, .0 parts per million for sulfur dioxide and 0.0, .0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. Moving over to the Nanavali Estate Sensor, at 9.12 p.m., it was detecting 0 parts per, zero, or zero parts per million for sulfur dioxide and 0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. Going down to Leilani Estate Sensor at 9.12 p.m., uh, it was reading 0.0, .0 parts per million for sulfur dioxide and 0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. And uh, finally, our last sensor, the one down in Kalapana Sea View Estates, at 9.18 p.m., it was reading 0.0125 parts per million for sulfur dioxide and 0.0, .0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. And that'll do it for the general update for tonight. Now let's do our favorite little segment. Look at that there. The first image we're going to look at is from the USGS. They caught a sequence, uh, three images of a surge before in the middle and, and at the peak. Um, the top image is the, before the surge began. The middle image is the one where the surge is a you know, began to occur, and the last image is apparently when the surge was at its peak. Okay, and the next set of images that I want to show you are going to be a fissure 8 and the channel. And there's something I want you to pay attention to because I'm going to talk about it while I, I show you these images. First, though, I want you to look at that there. Um, our lava tube that's right there off the edge apparently si seems to still be there. The, the top line is still smoky and um, it looks like the lava is still flowing through there slowly but still flowing through. Um, so that's pretty cool. 
I also want to point out the little silvery uh, blobs that you see on the side of the cone here and there. That's actually splatter uh, from, you know, material being ejected from the top and landing on the side of the cone. The darker, of course, is the cinder. And the last thing I want to point out in this image, uh, look at that there, right there. The uh, height of these levees coming off the side of the cone compared to the lava level, um, that is a huge difference than what we're uh, used to seeing. But more about that as we look at some of the other images. All right, this next image is, is kind of a two-parter. Uh, this one off in the distance and then a little bit closer up. So first, this one, uh, look at that there. On the, the left side of the image, you see all the green. And then on the right side, it's all the brown. However, over on the left, there is some brown in there because the, you know, the winds do you know, shift around. And that sulfur dioxide, if it's strong, it, it, it even suffocates the plants. All right, here in the close-up image, uh, look to the left side of the screen, uh, the left side of the lava levee, uh, and you'll notice that the level of the lava in the river is lower than uh, the levee, and this is something that, that is a little bit you know, more significant than, than what the average you know, level has been lately. Now, taking a look at this image of the lava channel, um, we can see that there is a significant difference. Um, it's literally, it looks like it's carved into the, the stone. I mean, it looks like it's carved into stone. It's really kind of cool looking. Um, but this is actually, to me, it's significant because there, there's a couple other things that I've heard today and yesterday uh, about the summit activity and, you know, the, uh, the fissure activity and then these levels. And uh, so what I'm seeing is that basically uh, the summit collapse events are getting further apart. Uh, as you heard in the report, uh, the last one was you know 55 hours ago uh, at the time of the report, and that is a, a significant difference because uh, a few weeks ago it, they were coming like every 24 to 36 hours. I mean, it was pretty much one a day. Uh, now it's one every two you know two plus days it seems uh so the question is 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 the uh summit level beginning to bomb bottom out you know in the crater you know a reservoir area uh is it is it hitting you know uh, um, a low level I, I don't know um i don't think the geologist knows either or excuse me the volcanologist you know usgs guys you know those i don't know if they you know i don't think they you know, no, either way. Um, point is, is that with the, the time between the two occurring, that means things are stabilizing. Uh, usually that, that represents some form of equilibrium uh, being approached. Uh, and that, that would be, I guess, good news. Um, but in connection with the fissure, uh, we're also not seeing uh, surge events necessarily uh, related to uh, summit collapse events so much anymore either. Um, however, USGS doesn't, hasn't said that the volume is down or anything like that, How, but looking at the photographs and, and watching this thing, you know, it really looks to me like the, uh, the volume is down, maybe not the speed, but maybe a little bit because the lava even is starting to look a little cooler than what it was. I mean, it's, it's, you know, um, uh, basically crusting over a little bit quicker, you know, higher up in the channel we're, we're seeing changes down at the ocean. Um, you know, entries, uh, the, the southern front has kind of, you know, I don't want to say it stalled out a little bit, but it's not advancing southern, southward anymore. It's kind of spilling out, you know, uh, above, you know, a little bit, which is good for Isaac Hale Park, or Isaac Holly Park. Because, uh, uh, you know, that's one place we don't really want to lose because it's got our boat ramp. It gives us access to the ocean for our, you know, watercraft. And this drop level seems to be consistent all the way down through the channel, as you've seen by this uh, photo slide of the channel. Uh, so yeah, um, not sure exactly what all that means, but uh, I guess if there is anything actually happening and the the eruption is beginning to diminish, uh, we should see some significant evidence of that within the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm sure, but. Again, we just got to wait and see. Okay, and for our last uh, look at that there, what I want you to look at that there is down at the bottom uh, right-hand corner of the screen, that the little disturbance in the water. Uh, that's one of those upwellings again. Um, 
where the 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 lava is is creating uh, a convection current and and sending the water up however if you notice in these photos that i'm showing here in this sequence uh it is quite uh, a distance offshore and um so to me it really looks like that this is not just you know uh, a current of water being pushed away from the ocean shore where the lava is entering but it's actually you know uh, some form of lava tube or finger you know underwater uh and you know that's the, the hottest spot is where it's breaking through underwater and creating this upwelling uh versus and occasionally you know the explosive activity that we've seen and in this last photograph of of this i think this photograph may actually be the smoking gun showing that there is some type of lava tube or finger or toe or whatever you want to call it crawling across the the ocean floor uh zooming in right here look at that there isn't that uh lays coming up out of the water off from the the coastline um and if so then that means there there's you know active lava uh on the ocean floor and that'll do it for tonight's update um, on the Kilauea Volcano Eruption in Leilani Estates. Uh, you know the drill. Uh, subscribe, hit the bell icon, thumbs up the video if you liked it. And I really hope you did. Um, it really makes me uh, feel really good when I see a large number of thumbs up on the video. But, you know, can't please everybody all the time and I get it. So that does it for tonight. Uh, everybody have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, it's all relative to where you are. This has been the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates update for July 27th, 2018.